Mm, all right. Well, what's up, everybody? Grim Green back here today. Thank you so much for joining me. I wanted to spend a little bit of time today talking about the American Heart Association. <laughs> American Heart Association, longtime American nonprofit public advocacy organization. They advocate for things obviously like, you know, heart health, as well as things like stroke awareness and cardiovascular health. But that's not really what I wanted to talk about today. What I wanted to talk about today is the American Heart Association and their new ironically titled hashtag quit lying campaign, their creation of the term big vape, their pretty blatant denial of science, as well as why did they suddenly change their stance on vaping and e-cigarettes? So this whole thing kind of started on November 15th, 2019. The American Heart Association tweeted out a link to their new hashtag quit lying initiative where they plan on tackling the youth vaping crisis which I guess it's not an epidemic anymore. The post in their link says they received a recent $20 million donation and they plan to use it for understanding how nicotine impacts young people. They're studying the long-term effects of nicotine on the youth, which as Dr. Gilchrist pointed out on Twitter, why spend the money researching the long-term health effects of e-cigs in youth when everyone agrees youth should not be using them? Unfortunately, two paragraphs later, the American Heart Association says their reasoning for wanting to do do these studies is because of the recent spate of vaping related lung diseases and deaths, which again, the CDC and FDA have already reported what those deaths and lung injuries were due to, and zero of them were due to legal nicotine vaping products. I'll have some links in the description to explain a little bit more about the black market vitamin E acetate deaths. This new hashtag quit lying anti-vaping campaign by the American Heart Association came as a real surprise to me, especially considering that that same day, both Yahoo News and CNN reported on a new study with headlines like, smokers who switch to vaping rapidly boost heart health in trial. Switching from e-cigarettes to vapes may be better for your heart health, study says. I would honestly love to have the time to pick apart that CNN article a little bit because they reported on this horribly. I mean, they did report on it, which gains them a little bit of brownie points, but not much. Regarding this study, Jacob George, a professor of cardiovascular medicine and therapeutics at Britain's Dundee University said, by switching from cigarettes to e-cigarettes, we found an average percentage point improvement of 1.5 within just one month. And to put that into context, each percentage point improvement in vascular function results in a 13% reduction in cardiovascular event rates, such as heart attacks. A 13% reduction in heart attacks from smokers that switch from cigarettes to e-cigarettes in just one month? Why is the American Heart Association not shouting this from the rooftops? This latest study gets added to the pile of studies that we already have showing how much less harmful vapor products are when compared to traditional tobacco cigarettes, also known as harm reduction. Harm reduction is the goal it has always been the goal. So rather than promote this science, the American Heart Association doubles down the very next day and officially launches their hashtag quit lying campaign, which I personally feel like was a huge waste of money because the hashtag was instantly hijacked by THR advocates, consumers, and doctors calling them out. In this tweet, they link to their fancy new website, quitlying.org. You're more than welcome to go visit, have a look around. It's really more comical than anything else and will not age well. Lots of hashtag quit lying and lots of hashtag big vape sort of social media propaganda is there as well for anybody else that wants to rally against vaping, which it's honestly kind of hard to say that with a straight face. So here's where things get a little more interesting. Someone that wishes to remain anonymous did a little bit of digging and found out that the American Heart Association hired a PR firm named Edelman PR, which might sound familiar to you. Edelman PR was hired in the early 2000s by Walmart. They created a group called Working Families for Walmart and kind of presented this as a grassroots movement. Well, the problem was this was funded by Walmart and the blog 
bloggers that drove around the country interviewing Walmart employees on their level of job satisfaction were actually just Edelman PR employees. This was all done, obviously, by Walmart to sort of improve their public image and was called by the New Yorker a blatant example of astroturfing. Edelman PR has been called dirty before. They were involved in the XL Keystone Pipeline as well as Rupert Murdoch's 2007 phone hacking scandal. I guess it just seems strange to me that the American Heart Association would hire a PR firm involved in such controversial issues. Or are they kind of the perfect PR company to try to convince America that vaping is dangerous? Okay, one last thing I wanted to talk about and then I'll let you get back to your normal, probably far more interesting lives. Why does the American Heart Association suddenly care about stopping vaping? The AHA actually does have an official stance on vaping and e-cigarettes. In a 2014 policy report by the American Heart Association on electric electronic cigarettes, they say, in comparison with NRTs, e-cigarette use has increased at an unprecedented rate, which presents an opportunity for harm reduction if smokers use them as substitutes for cigarettes. Harm reduction. Harm reduction is the goal. It has always been the goal. Lots of people recently used this quote against them using their own quit lying hashtag as many in tobacco harm reduction feel that it is the American Heart Association that may be the ones with their pants on fire, so to speak. The policy report paper that that picture is based on will be linked down in the description below. And it is a very robust document. It covers everything from electrical components and liquids to particulates and alkaloids. They talk about youth use. In fact, in the small cessation portion of this document, they themselves kind of show how successful vaping could be, saying at six months, the verified quit rates were 7. 3.3 with nicotine e-cigarettes, 5.8 with nicotine patch, and 4.1 with placebo e-cigarette treatment. Granted, now that's not leaps and bounds better than an NRT, but it is important to remember that a, the e-cigarette placebo treatment was almost as successful as an actual NRT, and for decades, NRTs have been the only approved way to quit, and this study from 2014 already shows that vaping is more effective than NRTs. And it's actually way more impressive when you consider that they were using technology from 2010 in this study. Someone should do a new effectiveness study based on new vapor products, and I bet the results for vaping would would be way higher. Oh yeah, someone did. Oh yeah, someone did. Anyway, that's kind of all I got for today. I guess to answer my original question, why does the American Heart Association suddenly want to stop vaping? I don't know. All the evidence so far shows a harm reduction benefit to the human heart if smokers switch immediately and permanently to e-cigarettes. And we know that they can because the American Heart Association themselves showed how effective e-cigarettes were in 2014 using 2010 technology. And limiting flavors, making the most successful stop smoking aid less appealing to the smokers that actually would benefit from it seems like the opposite of public health. So no, I don't have an answer, but someone needs to quit lying.